the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, on God. Amen. Today we are very blessed to have His Grace Bishop Daoud from the Diocese of Mansoura in Egypt. May God keep his life and his service for many years and many peaceful times. Today is the fourth Sunday of the Holy 50 Days. And you'll find that Christ is introducing himself as everything that the Jews knew God to be. In the book of Exodus, when the people were coming out of Egypt as slaves and going into the promised land, God revealed himself as water coming out of a rock. That's what they drink. He revealed himself as the bread of life, the manna which came down from heaven. He revealed himself as the light which they were following. It was the light of the way. And God was leading the people of Israel throughout the wilderness by a huge pillar of light. And so today, he's coming to say, I am that light of the world. <clears throat> today, the Lord is giving us a command. He's telling us, if we can have the clicker, if you can go back to the beginning of the gospel. He says what? A little while longer, the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. You see, Christ's light was shining before his people. Four weeks ago, we celebrated the most glorious feast of which his resurrection, and we heard all the, the, the readings of Holy Pascha, and we heard how everything pointed to the glory and the light of Christ. And the people of that day heard the same things. And they saw the same things. And they saw the miracle. But many people still chose to not walk in the light. Maybe you've seen the light. You've seen the light. You know the light. You know the light of Christ is there. Yet you prefer the darkness. You know, if you've sit in a dark room long enough, your eyes can adjust to the darkness. You can be able to make out things within the darkness and feel like, you know what, darkness is sufficient. I can live in darkness. And darkness doesn't just mean that I'm living in sin, and it could mean that. But this darkness could mean that you're not letting my light pour out into the different parts of your life. You're not inviting my light into the places where you have fear. I want you to think about the things that you are anxious about or you're fearful about. You see, this is all darkness in the mind. The devil uses these dark things in our mind, our, our fears and our doubts. Maybe you're doubting God today because God is working in a different way in your life. Today God is doing something completely different that you wouldn't have chosen, nor expected, nor do you desire it. And so all you're saying is, is no, I don't want that light. And I won't invite Christ light into my life because all I hear is doubts in my mind. Christ is saying, if all the light that is shining isn't enough for you, be careful. He says, walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. Today I want you to challenge yourself. And I want you to admit, do I know the light? Have I seen the light of Christ's work in my life? Am I at a place where I can't deny His glory? I can't deny who Christ is. There's no doubt that Christ is powerfully and actively working in my life. But I still am choosing the way of darkness. Christ is saying, invite my, life, my light into your life. There's places of darkness in your heart. There's things that you are allowing just to creep in your life. And he's saying, invite my light. Invite my resurrecting light. The light that is filled with power. The light that can shine through your life that everything in you is shining. You see, you can tell when somebody's living in darkness. And like I said, darkness may not necessarily mean in, in deep sin. But it could be, or it is, the absence of light. You are living in a way, possibly, that is just the absence of light. I'm going through the motions. Maybe I say my prayers. Maybe I go to church. Maybe I do everything that I'm supposed to do. But what? The light isn't there. 
That light is not penetrating into those certain places in my life that are rejecting the light. You see, the light can only come in as if you invite it in. You can reject the light from your life. You can reject to say God is promising. Follow my commandments and I promise you. But you're saying your commandment is just going to lead me to stress. Maybe bigger problems. Let me just lie my way through. Let me avoid, Lord, your calling. He's saying you're going to continue in darkness. You might be deceived. In John chapter 3, he says, Be careful that the light in you is not darkness. What you think is God working in your life, what you might think as light could be darkness. How scary is that? That what I think I'm doing is right is actually not from Christ's illumination in my life. It's me choosing a certain way, knowing very well that it is completely against the ways of God. Maybe it's not wrong, but it's not right. There's something maybe that you're choosing in your life that is not wrong. But by, the, by the laws of God, it's not wrong. But it's just not right either. Then Christ talks about the verse from Isaiah, which is very confusing. The verse from Isaiah says that the word of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Isaiah said again, he, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, lest they should see with their eyes and understand with their heart, lest they should turn so that I should heal them. It's almost as if Isaiah is saying that God blinded their hearts because Isaiah couldn't possibly understand that God is revealing His glory in such a powerful way. There's no denying His glory, but there's no response. There's no response. What's causing us to not respond? Maybe it's not that you can't see the light, but it's that you love yourself more than the light. You love yourself, and you love your own ways, and you love your own comfort more than the light. And Christ is trying to lead you into a life of resurrection. Victory in every part of your life. Power oozing through you in everything that you do, that you would understand what it means to be a follower of Christ. They would understand the mysterious power of being a disciple of the King of Kings. That the Holy Spirit living in you would be manifested in every part of your life. That when you speak, light is coming out of your mouth. Power is coming out of your mouth. That when you decide, it is just Christ's glory oozing through everything you do. You say, why not? Why not? Because we love ourselves or we love the opinions of others more than the ways of God. You see, God is not calling you just to be His puppet, just to obey Him just because. He knows the secret to the power. God is revealing to you and to me the secret of His power. He's saying, if you want power, follow my light. There's no other way. You're trying to get power by manipulating things in your life and it's not working. Follow the light. And that's the only way that you understand why it is that we're living these 50 days the way that we're living. We talk about resurrection, resurrection, resurrection. You're saying, after I had a few meals of meat, after the Holy Fast, there's no power, there's no resur re resurrection, there's no victory, there's no glory, there's no light, there's no living water. Maybe you are just closed off to the light because you feel like your way is better. Be careful that the light in you is not darkness. That the Christ that you feel like you're following, that you pick and choose what you want of Christ, and that Christ maybe tolerates this, and He doesn't mind this, and Christ is open-minded, that Christ is maybe is not the real Christ. Maybe that's darkness that's in your mind. I pray that today we would invite Christ's light into our life. We say, Lord, come into my life. Shine your light into the places that are filled with darkness, filled with doubt, filled with fears, Filled with selfishness. Selfishness is darkness. And open yourself up to the light of Christ. That you would say, I can no longer live the same. I imagine when Moses climbed up the mountain and he went and received the tablets from the hand of God and he saw the glory of God. 
Could Moses live the same? Could he possibly just go back to normal life? Isaiah is saying that's what the people did. They saw the glory of God and they what? They went the other way. Today is our calling. The end of today's gospel talks about judgment. Not because Christ came to judge, but because everything that you've seen and you know will only bring judgment. Because either you didn't respond to the light of Christ, what else is supposed to happen? Are we supposed to be rewarded that Christ was shining His light, shining His love, shining His power, and I didn't respond? It's not that God will judge you. It's that you're judging yourself. Today, let us repent. Let us turn back and say, Lord, I invite your light into my life. I'm sick of the darkness. I'm sick of the habitual sins that keep coming over and over again. I'm sick of not knowing your will because my mind is darkened because I'm only following the ways of the world. Beware that the light in you is not darkness. I pray today that he would shine his light into our life. That I wouldn't be in darkness anymore. That I wouldn't be in confusion. That I wouldn't be in a blatant rejection of what I know to be the glory of God. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Amen.